All right. Good morning, everyone. Or good morning. Good evening. Um, I start these things at six o'clock, and it's officially evening at six o'clock, right? Let me just fix the white balance on my keyboard camera. You know, I'm pretty white, but I'm not that white, right? Yeah, like here, a little bit. Like this. This is better. Oh no. I pushed default. Let me. 3564. We want. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Uh, so. What is today's problem? Let's check it out. Also. We've been getting a lot of followers. And I think I need six more. And then I will be a Twitch affiliate. It's pretty cool, right? All right, let's get going. What's today's problem? Additive code. Um, six. Wow. We're getting followers on stream. That's never happened before. And now you can see the alert. Looks like a pro streamer, right? Anyway, so, okay. So we, we had to switch, we're going to, okay, we're going to the regional part and we switch to a much larger plane and we have to fill out customs declaration forms. I love how they're kind of leaning into the whole travel thing. Cause you know, it's like 2020, nobody's traveled. So they're like, we want to get you to get the full travel experience for SATA. Okay, so 26 yes or no question marks A through Z. All you need to do is identify the question for which anyone in your group answers yes. Since your group is just you, this doesn't take very long. However, the person sitting next to you seems to be experiencing a language barrier and asks if you can help. For each of the people in their group, um, you write down the questions for which they answer yes. One for line example, A, B, C, X, A, B, C, Y, A, B, Z. All right, thank you so much for the follows, everyone. Uh, so, for in this group, there are six questions to so anyone answered yes. A, B, Z, A, Y, N, Z. Okay, another group asked for help. You all truly collect answers from every group on board. Each group's answer is separated by blank line within each group. Each person's answers are on a single line. Okay, so... Five groups, yeah. Three people, they answered yes. Question two people, yes. Okay, so we have to count the number of answers. All right, let's check it out. So. This is going to be our test input and let's make the day six dir dir day six touch may not hs this is going to be day six let's say uh, let's touch the test input file test Paste the input right here. And now let's go back to, let's close the day five ones. Too many setting day three, day three. Okay. Main.hs, no, we don't want that. We want, we want to call it day six hs Oh no. Day six. Day six HS, yeah, like that. And uh, so let's start. Uh, this is gonna be module main where. Uh, so I usually, because I have an Icelandic keyboard, but then I usually switch it to English because, like, programming languages are written with English keyboards in mind. So you can see my keyboard here, right? And it has like, uh, and eh, uh, right here. So, so when I, when I write, you know, I write like, 
instead of going like semicolon, it goes I, right? But then I switch to the English keyboard and it actually makes sense. So uh, yeah, and I've just always done that like since I started programming. It's so much nicer. It's like programming languages are written by people usually in the US or in the UK and they all have British or like they all have normal keyboards and and uh, which means that that's how programming languages are kind of written right so all the symbols are accessible from those keyboards and then like on an Icelandic keyboard you have to go like Whoa. and I don't want that RSI so okay let's say get input there's gonna be a file path it's gonna list give us a list of strings and what do we want to do so let's go let's go for a list of list of strings let's we want like we want each group in one get input fp equals so this is going to be read lines and then it's going to be lines we're going to get the lines from the read lines but then we're gonna want us we want to split those at spaces and there there is no function in data.list that does this which is it is so weird wait a minute hmm i'm thinking yeah because there will be an empty line so let's just write the function split when we're gonna take an A to bool list of A's and it's gonna return us a list of A's. So split when a cond so on an empty list we're just gonna oh no it's not gonna take an A, it's just gonna take a list of list of A's. It's gonna return a list of list of A's. So on an empty list, we just return empty list. Split when so cond a a's. So if it is the case that cond a um, so I think so we can say so here we say cond okay. We just say. A S. Let me see. So this is gonna be take take while. So take while takes in the con and it like uh, takes the thing where. Okay, let's say here undefined. So you guys all doing? I think. Yeah. So okay. So con. So take while. Let's see. Yonita Babe. That is a great nickname. You guys remember when it was Hot Girl Summer? Like Hamatopi Type Theory Summer? That was a good joke. Girl Summer. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm doing good. Well, yeah. I think I have like slight. Uh, slight coronavirus symptoms actually but I haven't been seeing anyone so. so who knows maybe I'll just not finish the admin of code because I'll be dead but at least my final days were well documented and that's all I ask for right it's okay so take while let's see here T take while yeah yeah i'm perfectly perfectly fine it's just a uh, it's just how it is okay let's see we actually don't want to take while we want span we didn't we write this function right before uh let's say so here we're gonna have a uh, so so uh, x and y i don't know how we would we 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 say this so let's say span con of as so this is gonna be so 
so span oh, okay so it's i think it's break break does the opposite we wrote this exact function before um but so okay, we, we're gonna break on the con so, we, so it takes until the con holds and so okay so then we want to say here case uh, y of so if we if we we ended up with the entity list when we we have everything so then we are gonna say just the list that contains x otherwise we will say x concatenated to split when cond of y and then we're gonna we're gonna say split when equals empty line so what is it complaining about ding, 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 ding. Hmm. Oh yeah, we have to we have to f map this, right? Uh, we we always had to f map lines, right? But now it's saying, what is it complaining about here? All right, f map lines. Okay, and then we want to apply something here, right? So what does this whole say? A list of string to any, yeah. And then we say split when on equals empty list, right? And this Um hmm. What is what is going on here? So uh, on empty that's going to be you know a list of strings to a list of list of strings and on empty is equal to split when like this, right? And then we're on empty, right? Well, let's just let's just apply it later. Wait, so this is gonna be list of strings, right? Maybe I'm f mapping wrong. Oh, <sighs> I I put in the argument here. Eh. Uh, this is gonna be split when like this and read lines uh, uh, what read, read file right read lines doesn't exist that's why we had to use the lines operator anyway so now we are getting the input we're splitting it up and let's just see what we get let's see see if we get the groups do get input uh, test input uh, into print uh, we don't need this Uh, GHC day six, RHS, O oh, day six. O oh, day six. And then we are gonna time running day six. Whoops. That is an infinite output. Um, now my terminal is completely frozen. Shit. Let us let oh no. Let's just kill kill the editor. End task. Too much memory. That was crazy. Okay. Um, let's just. 
try it again. Uh, what, where did we go wrong? So, so, so we didn't. Okay. Uh, maybe this is supposed to be, oh, I think it's because we didn't, we didn't take the first element of, of Y. So this has to be like, so this is going to be an element that satisfies the cond. Like this. Crazy stuff, right? Let's say day six. Can't wait until then. And all right, that worked. See you in Haskell. Difference between infinite evaluation and something that actually works. It's just two characters. Okay, uh, so this is the input. And our, our, so there's six questions which anyone answered yes. A, B said X, Y, duplicate answer. So another group. Okay. Um, so, okay, so I'm just gonna put this stuff into a set. Import data.list, no data.set. I am just going to solution fixing a list of list of strings. So for for each group, it takes in a list of strings. Um, we're going to and it's going to return an int. So the solution of the stirs. It's going to be so we could use nub here, but I think I think it's easiest to just say concat strings. So just want it to be all one strings, and then we say uh, we we're gonna import the set, and then we say import qualified data dot set as set, and then we're gonna say concat strings. And we're gonna say set dot from list, and then we're going to say length. Um, what does length actually do? Is it like defined generally? Data dot set. Let's let's just look at data dot set. Uh, because uh, it you know does it just have size? Yeah, let's just say size. It like makes more sense for a set. And then we are going to, and this is gonna be set.size, and then we are going to print map solution. What does it do? Three, 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 one, one. 33311. So it works for the test input. So we want to sum it up. Okay, a 11. Now let's do it with a real input. See what happens. Input. And let's actually create the input. New file input. Uh, paste it. Okay, and let's run it. Six six three three. Seems reasonable. All right, we got the first one. 20 minutes only this time. Uh, most of it spent writing split one. All right, we're on the track. So I, I'm hoping like this set thing that we did is gonna, it's going to help us do the second part very easily. Let's see, part two. 
Okay, you notice that you misread one word in the instruction. You don't need to be invited to a question which anyone answered yes. You need to identify the questions to which everyone answered yes. Oh no. Because <laughs> we made this a set. We very heavily optimized it for like anyone. Like for exists. Now it's going to say for all. Um... So we need to, we need to fix that. Um, so my question is, like, let's look at the input. Are they all sorted? No, they're not sorted. So we're going to have to do for which everyone answered. Yes. Okay, um... Let's see. Let's see here. So what if we... What if we take the input and we sort it? So we take the input, we sort it, and then we go like, you know, check if the first one is in all of them. And if it is in all of them, it should be the first one in all of them, right? Because we sorted it. So we take a list of strings. This is gonna be an integer also. Two, two. Okay. Um, so we have the strings. Okay, where? Okay, so we're gonna say uh, sorted equals sort stirs. We're gonna import data dot list dot. We're gonna import data dot list so we have the sort. Um. Okay, and then we compare. So this was a very imperative algorithm. You know, checking the head of all of the lists. Um, I, I, is it, I think it's too, it's a bit too imperative. I'm wondering if we can like j j create some sort of data structure, um, to do this. Hmm. I mean, I guess we could like generate all the letters in the alphabet, generate a set, uh, put all everything, put all of them in the set with like a counter and then check, check the counters for which the elements are synced. But that seems too much work. Does anyone have any good ideas about like a functional way to do this? Like I'm gonna get started on the non-functional way, but I wish I'm gonna. I, w I want you guys to tell me if there's a functional way. Um. Right. No. So what we can do, what we can do, we can generate sets from all of them, and. We really, we only need to walk over the shortest string because, um, and then we just check if, if the elements in the for shortest strings are, are elements in all of the other ones. Um, yeah, intersection between all the sets. That is good also. That is cool. But, but you see my approach, right? So we find the shortest string, we check. And then we check, okay, yeah. I think we could also just do intersection for all of them. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks, chat. Let's see, intersection, uh, data dot set. Let me see.
Uh, just fold intersections. O, M, log, N, M plus one. Yeah, this works. Let's see. I feel like cheating a bit. I feel like I'm cheating by this one word, intersection. But yeah, so if we just uh, map to the strings, uh, uh, we map a set.from list to the strings. And uh, this will return a list of sets. And then we fold L intersection. And then we say size. Uh, intersection on, and that's the thing. Then we need, uh, we need to have intersection with what? Well, fold L1. Um, okay. Why is this, oh, is this going to be set dot intersection? And this is essentially what we were trying to do, right? Uh, we'll look at the first string and we check if it's the others are elements in it. Uh, but this kind of just does that from the top. So map. Let's see. Let's not map the do the sum for the test input. Uh, let's see. Three zero one one one. Three zero one 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 one. Yeah. So I just think this is the answer. So what is the idea here? Um. Yeah. Let's just try it. I think. I think it will work. All right, we did the second one. This is the shortest one so far. I, I think I should not ask chat for help. I think it's, I mean, it's not wrong, but like in the sense that, cause you know, people might've solved this already. Cause like I'm doing it way after everyone else. And then it's, you know, it's a bit of cheating if they spent too much time thinking about it and got through the intersection. But intersection is exactly what I was describing, right? So, but the trick is to use fold L1. So fold L1 is essentially just fold L, except it takes the first element uh, as the initial element, which is exactly what we were thinking. You know, we were thinking, let's walk over the first string and let's check if that is an element like in the rest, you know, in each of the other sets. But that is exactly the same as checking if each element in that one is a, is a member of the intersection of all the other sets. So instead of, you know, going check for element in all the sets all the time, it's, it's way better to just check for, just compute the intersection of all of them. and. It just works. All right, that was a short one today. I hope your Sunday is progressing nicely. It's second of Advent. Uh, got two candles lit, or I did earlier these this day. It was, they were they were like tiny candles. I don't have the proper proper Advent candles, so I can't. Uh, I can't have them lit all day, but let's see. All right, let's uh, commit this and uh, get status. Get diff, yeah, get uh, day five, day six. Uh, we want to add the test input and the input. Uh, commit. 
day six. Yeah, this is the 2020 Moomin Cup. Uh, I got it. I got it for my birth. No, not my birthday. I got it for Diwali. Yeah. And I like that that, um, let's see if you guys can see it properly. If I hold it all the way up here. Uh, yeah. It's like the Moomin Snaudi. That's what it's called in Icelandic. The Moomin... The Moomin... I just think he's just called the Moomin Troll in English or something like that. And he's like, he's like walking through a the biggest snow blizzard you've ever seen, right? And uh, oh my god, feels very on point for 2020. So, but it's nice, yeah. So I've been wondering also, you know, what should we do if we finish this early? I'm, I, because. I, I wish Advent of Code was a bit harder uh, this year, because like last year at this point, uh, we were writing this big virtual machine, GitHub Treatlo Advent of Code 2019. Uh, my God, I didn't want to search GitHub. I wanted to search Google because. Yeah, okay, let me let me just go to GitHub and find it. Uh, but like, I, Google is better at searching GitHub than GitHub is searching GitHub. Because it is like, it never finds anything that I want. AOC 2019, right? So by day five, or day six, right? We were hard at work. Uh, when, maybe not. When did the int machine start? Because I I think it was... Uh, yeah, here we already had the read array, like we had the start of the int machine. And then on day three, we were like writing... Yeah, so like this is day three of of Advent of Code last year, you know, we were writing hundreds of lines of code, or not a hundred, but a hundred lines of code, right? Day four, I don't know, it seems seems like it was harder last year. Uh, at least, you know, like this. This is the entire int machine. It's 105 lines, right? And it was a lot trickier. But yeah. I guess it will get harder next couple of days. Um, I wonder what this graphic will turn out to be. I think it's gonna be like Santa sitting in a lounge chair on this vacation island finally, after we helped him through all the issues he had to deal with. It's a very... I mean, he's just trying to get to this vacation island, right? But it's been a very rough sort of going, right? It's been very... He's, he's had to do very computationally intensive tasks to get there. Okay, not computationally intensive, but like you need to, you need to know what you're doing. Oh yeah, set intersection, that was a trick. And you know, this is... This is just a one-liner, right? We could, we could even like, I mean, yeah, we wrote this split one function, but we don't like, that's like a, there's, there is a library with that function somewhere. So we could have just imported that and then just like, boom. We don't even use this sort of, let's clean this up a bit. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so there won't be much more today, um, but you can catch these sessions uh, on YouTube. I have a playlist there 
and you can like see the ones I've done so far and I think I think this is a bit fun you know it's an admit of code while while streaming oh no is um it's a uh, it's like good for practicing interview questions, right? Because then you're not just sitting there writing. You have to be talking about what you're writing. You know, it's so it's like a it is a skill you would like to develop. Um, you know how to talk about code while you're coding, and you know it's a lot of fun. So uh, let's see. But anyway, so here's the playlist of the videos so far. Um, and yeah, if you want to catch it. And I think, you know, I think this is fun. But of course, it's all about you guys. Um, but yeah, I learned my lesson now. There, there's, it's too easy if you ask the viewers. I think I also have very high quality viewers. Cause like I post this on, on, on my Twitter and like my Twitter is essentially just Haskell, not, okay. Not just Haskell people, but like functional programming researchers, right? So you're, che I'm cheating a bit when I'm asking for a question, asking for help, right? Cause those people, they know what they're doing. You guys know what you're doing. Anyway, that's going to be all for today um if you are here i would like you to it would be nice if you follow i need three more followers and then i i get to twitch affiliate and i think then they i can start selling subscriptions or something and then i can be like hey use your free amazon prime subscription i don't know I just, I just think it's funny that I'm just sitting here writing Haskell code and people are watching it. That's the dream, right? To just code all day uh, and be able to talk about it. Cause like, that's the thing with coding. It can be I get a bit lonely sometimes, but if you feel like you can talk to someone, uh, it's a lot. Yeah. Thanks. You need a babe. That is such a great nickname. Okay, I, I have to explain it to the rest of you, right? So there's this lemma in category theory called the Yonira lemma. Uh, I thought this stream would take like an hour, so we have, we got time. And it's called the Yonira lemma. And what does it say? It's arguably the most important result in category theory. Now, that's a big statement, right? So, uh, there's a lot of puns. There was a paper by Jeremy. Jeremy, all you need, you need a, uh, what was it? Jeremy, all you need, all you need to know about Janita, uh, by Jeremy Gibbons. He gave this talk at ICFP, uh, and man by Shulong. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I, it, uh, I, yeah. But uh, Jeremy Gibbons, uh, he's the one who gave the talk, I think. That's why I remember it. And uh, so, you need a lemma is you can tell a lot about the person by the company they keep. And that is essentially the Unita Lemma. The, the Unita Lemma essentially states that if you know everything about how an object behaves, you know the object itself. Which is a... That's my understanding of it, right? That... Uh, that... Uh, and I recommend this paper. I hope I hope other people can chime in uh, if if I'm explaining it wrong. But like that's essentially my after re after watching this talk, 
that's like that's how i understand the uni dilemma that 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 the more that if you know everything about it's it's kind of like a a, a statement to saying you know if, if if you know everything there is to know about something you know what that is so if you know every way that thing relates to other things like you don't need to know the thing itself you you have the thing itself in some sense so what is the statement for a locally small category c set uh blah 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 f is similar to f of a naturally in a said for sec c a locally small category so so this is this is the the like what you need and then this is the actual setting right so it's like how do you read this uh it's like the the all the isomorphisms or all the all the morphisms from c to set yeah i don't i'm not i don't need i don't actually know how to read this excel is quite formidably terse uh well let's say section two this is good content right just us reading papers about the uni dilemma <laughs> that is my research um essentially this is just what we do all day um but okay yeah i think this is a good this is a good idea um it's like that's how we know boolean functions right so if i were to define so if i say here okay and i don't think we can write it with big letters let's say and let's say and so it's, that's, that's that's gonna take that's gonna take two bulls and it's gonna output something and if we say and so this is gonna be and let's just and prime so and prime functions for the booleans right so we just write the truth table we just say false false equals false and prime false true equals false and prime of true false equals false and and prime of true true equals true and here we're essentially this is this is kind of the application of the uni dilemma we're saying i have defined this function in a case-wise manner for every single uh input and that means we know everything there is to know about the function. I think that is also like the you need a lemma somewhere hidden there. It's, just, it's that's the trick. Like if you define something, so and then we're looking at like at the category of booleans, and this is the category of boolean pairs, and and it it just so happens that we can define the function case by case by case basis like we can define every relation between every single object uh so in the category boolean to boolean a boolean pair comma boolean to booleans and the uni dilemma essentially says that then you know everything there is to know about that function if you know how all of its inputs behave that is you know, it seems very obvious, but like the uni dilemma is proven formally, which is that's how I understand it. But I really recommend this paper uh, by Jeremy and Shalom Boisu. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You know, my name is Mahdias Pak Kisroson. Almost no one can pronounce that correctly, so I try my best to pronounce names, but if I'm getting them wrong. Please forgive me. I know how it feels, right? So, uh, okay, let's see. Let's see. This is section two. So, and like this is, I think Jeremy in particular, he's very good at this. I really respect Jeremy as a researcher. He, he digs a lot into category theory and then he kind of extracts stuff from there and explains it for the rest of us. This is what uh, Phil Wadler did also. 
like he did it with monads right he was just like guys guys and gals you know there is a, a a function like there's a concept here called monads in math by Moggy. we can use it to model computation and then we did that and that's why we have such a nice fancy way of doing computation in in haskell because phil wadler really explained it to all of us and jeremy is doing this as well and like also nicholas Wu. uh scholar let's go nicholas Wu. Uh, i think he's also in the same department i think they're both nicholas Wu. Uh, no this is not this is not him. Let me see. Uh, ICFP 2018. Uh, this was a good conference, by the way. Let's see. What are the papers here? This is a problem with being Icelandic. Like I remember people's first names because that's how we, that's how we track each other. Um, but then I have a hard time with last names. Accepted papers. Wu. Yeah, Nicholas Wu. He works a lot with Matt Pickering. Um, oh no. Dude, dude, oh no. The ACM. Oh my god. This guy. Uh, let's just view the PDF. This is also a good paper. I think it's Songor's. So Songor is a legend. Okay. I think he showed up. I think he's like super young. He's like, I'm going to say 21, 22. I, I don't know. And he's like showed up first day of his PhD. He was on stage at ICFP 2018 talking about super cool, like this stuff, generic deriving of generic traversals. And it's just like, you just use it and it just gives you lenses for everything, uh, which means you can just, you know, use any data structure super easily. And he had like a really good talk. I think he was using like Emacs and he just showed everything live. That was a really good talk. I like that talk. And Songer, you know, you just have the right attitude. And I, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think that's enough chat for today. Check out Songor's papers, they're really good. Check out Nicholas and Wu's paper. Oh yeah, they're at, yeah, so he's at Bristol. And check out Jeremy Gibbons papers. They are all good papers. The ones I've seen are all good papers, but maybe I've only seen the good papers. All right, and uh, yeah, see you all tomorrow for day seven of, uh, Admin of code, and maybe we'll have some more research. We never know. We never know. All right. See you all. <laughs>